to tell you nothing. In fact, if they were to tell you the truth, they would be breaching one of the important cares and duty of cares of administering the invalid, the sick, the infirm, the lunatics, the idiots. Now, I know, I know that's perverse. I, I know the concept is, is hard to fathom, but it gives them the argument, the framework, the rationale to hide everything and to lie, lie, lie through their teeth to you until you can establish that, no, you're not a lunatic. You're not hovering from one remedy to another remedy. You're not going from one guru to another guru. You're not starting something and stopping it. You're not firing off every piece of paper you can possibly throw. You're not going to court and then giving up. You're not a lunatic. You understand that you and you alone and the knowledge you have is the only magic bullet that anyone can ever offer you and that you are honourable, competent, respectful of the law and know exactly who you are and know exactly how their system works. And then, only then, do they have a moral obligation to tell you the truth. Now, if you, if you don't believe me, I understand if, if it's hard to believe, then let me give you a quote of a key word. I can find it. Animus Revocande, is it's called? Animus Revocande. And Animus Revocande, and I can't find it, so I'm doing it from memory, is an extremely important concept. It basically means in their system that when the mind is clear of the revocation and the facts are known and the document and the intent is clear, then even if you are obstructed in their system, your revocation has effect. Animus revocandi is the word. I'm sorry I can't quote it exactly because I did not pull off the definition, but I refer it in this conversation with you guys because in their system it is clear that when you have risen beyond the status of a lunatic and you know who and what you are, they are legally and morally obliged to say, okay, you win. Yeah, here's the paperwork. Okay, you're free. But up until then, they can lie, they can intimidate, they can behave as if they are the very worst wardens of a mental institution. And of course they do. They do. So that is one system of control, a very important system of control that they put in place in 1871 in regards to the guardianship and treating us all as either idiots or as lunatics. But of course there's another system of control as well. There's no shortage of systems of control. And this is not an endless series of rabbit holes, by the way. This is clearing the air. As we described tonight, we can talk about the sacrament of penance and the framework and the three acts and the role of the executor. You can do all that. So it's getting clearer. This is just getting clearer about the element of guardianship, a very relevant role when we're dealing with civil matters where the IRS come after you, where they want to take you home, where they want to take your children. So guardianship is an important part, a very important part of the powers that they're using. And the other control is when we complete an application from applicatio, Latin applicatio. And application is of particular importance because when we apply, we submit and we transfer rights to the role of a patron who has the power to seize the asset. It's a very particular concept, applicatio. 
So if you think about it, when we've gone through and we've looked at what's going on in mortgages and we say that the promissory remote was sold or they've put QCIP numbers or they won't give us back the original, it's all, it's all irrelevant, totally irrelevant. The real power that we granted them, that we have not contested and dissolved, is the power of the guardian that came right from the beginning when we signed an application. Now, it turns out, for deliberate reasons, that every government service and every commercial service requires us to fill in an application. And in the process, we are appointing the other party as the guardian for the res of that particular relationship, whether it be a car, a house, a home, a boat, a license, whatever. So not only do we have this overarching model which has gradually depreciated the idea of a hospital that we're all idiots and or, or lunatics, but we have the specific model that has become the de jure in their system where by virtue of the application, the plaintiff can come before the court and claim guardianship, can claim the role of executor the pro se cutis in moving an action against you to make lawful the seizure of the property. They don't have to go to court. And in many... All right. Um, sorry, everyone. We'll pause for a moment here and uh, allow Frank to get back on. Looks like he got bumped off. So we'll just pause for a few moments. Uh, if everyone on the chat will, uh, if you have a question, just type in question, uh, all caps. And uh, then after that, put in your question to Frank for during the Q&A. And uh, those on the phone lines, if you'll press star 8 to get in the question and answer queue, we'll take everyone in the order that you uh, raise your hand, so to speak, on the uh, star 8. All right. Uh, I'm watching for him to come back on. And we'll get him back on here in just a moment as soon as he gets back online. Hang in there, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, we have Frank Collins from Australia. He's uh, just temporarily gotten bumped off, it looks like, so we will get him back on here shortly. The... Uh, Website for <clears throat> University uh, Eucadia. That's uh, university.eucadia.org, I believe. Uh, if you head over there, you can get a lot of information. Also, uh, be able to download some audios, and uh, you'll be able to see uh, transcribed calls there as well. Um, I can see some things going on here with uh, Frank that looks like he's needing to. Um, He's actually coming back online, so hopefully he'll be back on here shortly. Some of you are asking about <clears throat> what day it is and time it is over there in Australia where Frank is. I believe it's about a 15 or 16 hour difference. Uh, not sure since we have sprung forward over on the East Coast here. Uh, what that time difference is anymore. But I believe it's right around there. So he is uh, right near his lunchtime over there on tomorrow, April 7th. Um, there he is. 
Hi, can you hear me? Yep, there you are. Hi. Hi. Um, where did uh, where did we finish off? What was the last thing? <clears throat> I believe you were. Hmm, let's see. Uh, well, we lost you right when you were um, discussing the process of the. Um, whether you are discharged from the hospital and what has actually occurred um, when they bring you into court and so on and so forth. Okay, so I've been off for a while. <laughs> uh, well, it's been about three minutes, well, about two or three minutes so far. Okay, so, all right. Yeah. All right, well, if we go a bit over time on, on this front end, we'll, we'll cover it with the questions. Um, so I'm sorry that I, I dropped off everybody, but let me let me finish that, Terry, and then I'll talk about the modern the modern version of guardianship through the application. So oh yes, the um, application. Uh, we were just touching on the application, the virtue of the application, uh, and how that brings us in. Um, excellent. So, yep. Okay. Well, I, I, look, I think we've covered the the hospital aspect in terms of of the guardianship and and why they did it, and and that it gave them the lawful and moral basis to basically lie and not tell us anything because they can argue that we are mental patients um, and our patients. But, but they, they add an extra layer to us and it's a very relevant layer to what's happening in court for us at the moment. And that is the fact that application, the word application comes from the Latin applicatio and it has a very, very specific definition Applicatio or applicationis means the right of a patron to inherit a client's effects. The right of a patron or guardian, patron is a guardian, the right of a patron to inherit a client's effects. So when you fill an application and submit to an application, what you're doing is that you are conveying your rights, all your rights, to the other party you're appointing them the guardian and granting them the right to seize the property at any point. You are merely the keeper of the property, the maintenance department of the property, the janitor of the property, and they are the guardian. Now this is an extremely important concept that we've missed because whether we're dealing with the IRS, whether we're dealing with a home, a car, or any res, it's this argument of guardian that they've been using against us. Now, the response, the correct response, is the executor approach. But there is an additional component that we need to recognise, and that is we need to dissolve, annul, this claim guardianship based on what took place before we move forward. Now, I'm about to talk about the letter, the decree of nullity, which is on one-heaven.org. Go to how to succeed at court. And when you get there, have a look at the link that says Executor Office. Go down the page and you'll see two new documents, one of which is called Decree of Nullity. Now I'm going to bring this up, the Decree of Nullity. But before we go through it, I want to make one thing clear before we look at this particular letter that needs to go prior to or with the executive letters, and it's this. If you look at their system and the argument they say about how to dissolve, the word dissolve is the right description of a guardianship, it's a classic example of the perversion of their system because what they say <laughs> is that in order to dissolve a guardianship, you have to make an application. <laughs> in other words, you have to create a new guardianship before they'll dissolve the other one. So clearly, clearly there is a perversion. And I explain this to you so that you don't get tricked by them saying, oh no, decree of nullity is the wrong method. You've got to apply. Well, if, if a court says to you, you've got to apply for anything in order to dissolve a guardianship, you know straight away that it's just an outrageous lie. So the, what we do is we present a decree of nullity 
and what a decree of nullity is, it's an annulment. What we're doing is we're annulling 